Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing cyclic AMP signaling. Okay, so at the beginning of this video, what I want to talk about is desensitization of the uh, GS pathway, basically. Okay, now desensitization is a phenomenon that occurs if you keep the ligand uh, for a G protein coupled receptor in the extracellular fluid for too long. Okay, so uh, we talked about how the signal through the GS cascade is terminated if you remove the ligand from the G protein coupled receptor. Okay, so if the ligand is removed from the extracellular fluid. What I now want to talk about is how you stop the GS cascade being permanently on even if the ligand it remains present in the extracellular fluid. Okay, and basically this involves turning the G protein coupled receptor off. Okay, right. So, this is the concept of desensitization, and basically it's called desensitization because you are becoming desensitized to the presence of the ligand. Okay, you're effectively stopping yourself from listening to that ligand, okay, by removing the receptors for the ligand. So, let's just draw our G protein coupled receptor here. Okay, so here it is with its classical seven membrane spanning alpha helices. Okay, right. So that's now saying that the ligand for this G protein coupled receptor is just being applied and applied and applied. So we're not removing the ligand from the extracellular fluid. It's just remaining there, basically. How do we stop this G protein coupled receptor activating the GS cascade indefinitely, basically, and overstimulating the cell? And this doesn't just go for the GS cascade. This, in fact, goes for all heterotrimeric G protein cascades. Okay, but we're obviously specific interested in the GS cascade. Okay, well basically this involves enzymes which collectively are known as GRKs, okay, which stands for G protein coupled receptor kinase. Okay, so um, the G is for G protein coupled, okay, the R is then for receptor, okay, so GPCR, and then the K is for kinase, okay. So these are enzymes which are going to phosphorylate the intracellular aspect of the G protein coupled receptor when it is in the on state, okay, and they will phosphorylate it if it's been on for too long, or at least the probability of it getting phosphorylated will increase the longer it's on. Okay, so let me tell you about the different types of G protein coupled receptor kinase then. So there are seven different G protein coupled receptor kinases which are called GRK1, GRK2, GRK3, GRK4, and in fact I'll write them all out for GRK5, GRK6, and GRK7. So the seven different uh, G protein coupled receptor kinases, and they're all capable of fundamentally doing the same thing, which is phosphorylating serine and threonine residues on the intracellular aspect of on state G protein coupled receptors. Now that is very important, okay? They cannot phosphorylate a G protein coupled receptor unless it's in the on state, i.e., unless it's got ligand bound to it. Okay, if it doesn't have ligand bound to it and it's in the off conformation, the inactive conformation, then it won't get phosphorylated by a G protein coupled receptor kinase. But if it is in the on state for too long, then what's going to end up happening is you're going to start getting phosphate groups added on to the intracellular domain of the G protein coupled receptor by these G protein coupled receptor kinase enzymes here. Okay, now. Going back to the different uh, types of G-protein coupled receptor kinase, G-protein coupled receptor kinase 1 and G-protein coupled receptor kinase 7 are only found in the retina. Okay, so these are only found in the retina, and they play extremely important roles in the retina in desensitizing rhodopsin receptors, basically. And that's really, really important in desensitizing your retina to uh, bright light, basically. So why, when you go into a really bright uh, place where there's really bright light, you eventually get used to it. Okay, and it's because your retina, well, partly, part of the reason for it is that your retina is becoming desensitized to light by desensitizing the rhodopsin receptors. Okay, right. Then GRK4, 
Again, that has a really limited expression profile. That's only found in the testes. Okay, so the other four, GRK2, GRK3, GRK5, and GRK6, these are the ones which are found everywhere else in the body, basically, and they service the rest of the body. Okay, right. So, what then happens when you uh, phosphorylate the intracellular aspect of a G-protein coupled receptor like this? Well, basically, what it does is it allows another protein to now bind onto the intracellular aspect of the G-protein coupled receptor. So, what happens is when your G-protein coupled receptor is in the on state for too long, okay, it's had its ligand bound for too long, what's going to happen is uh, the G protein coupled receptor kinases are going to phosphorylate the intracellular aspect of it, and now that's going to pave the way for a new protein to come in and bind to the intracellular aspect of the G protein coupled receptor. And this new protein is what's called arrestin. Okay, so we'll color in arrestin here in yellow. Now, there are four different arrestin proteins in humans. Okay, and these are simply called arrestin 1, arrestin 2, arrestin 3, and arrestin 4. Now, arrestin 1 and 4 are just like GRK1 and 7. Okay, they're only found in the retina. Okay, so it's arrestin 2 and arrestin 3 that are really important everywhere else in the body. Okay, and arrestin 2 and arrestin 3 confusingly have other names. Okay, arrestin 2 and arrestin 3 are also known as the beta arrestins. Okay, and arrestin number 2 is called beta arrestin number 1. And arrestin number three is called beta arrestin number two, so don't let that confuse you, okay? Uh, arrestin number two is beta arrestin number one, and uh, arrestin number three is beta arrestin number two. And these are the arrestins that service uh, the rest of the body, basically. Okay, right. Now, what then is the significance of an arrestin binding uh, to the intracellular aspect of a G protein coupled receptor? Well, firstly, once the arrestin has bound to the intracellular aspect of the G protein coupled receptor, it blocks the G protein coupled receptor from now being able to uh, bind to and activate any more heterotrimeric G proteins. So this, in effect, turns the G protein coupled receptor signaling off. Okay, uh, so that's one of the ways that desensitization is achieved very quickly. But it does more than that. It actually leads to the removal of the receptor from the plasma membrane, okay, and the moving of the receptor into endosomes, basically. Okay, so what the resting can cause is the process of endocytosis. Okay, and let me just describe to you now uh, the endocytic pathway. Now, I'm not going to go through the actual mechanism of endocytosis, but basically what it involves is it involves cell membrane being pinched off. So let's say here we have our G protein coupled receptor in complex with the arrestin protein. What the arrestin protein is going to trigger is it's going to trigger this receptor being pinched off into an um, endocytic vesicle. So what's going to start to happen is you're going to form something like this from the plasma membrane. Okay, and you're going to get the beginning of a little endocytic vesicle which contains your receptor in complex with the arrestin protein like so. And then eventually the endocytic vesicle will be completely pinched off from the plasma membrane like so. And now the receptor has been removed from the plasma membrane, basically. Okay, and this structure that we've now created, this little um, sphere of cell membrane with the receptor arresting complex here in it, this is called an endocytic vesicle. Okay, now where does the endocytic vesicle take the receptor arresting complex to? Well, basically it takes it to uh, a structure known as the early endosome. Okay, so let me discuss what the early endosome is. So the early endosome is an intracellular organelle which has a structure like so. Okay, and these sort of tentacle structures that I'm drawing, these are where vesicles can bud off the early endosome. Okay, so this structure is the early endosome. 
And what's going to happen is our endocytic vesicle coming from the plasma membrane is going to now fuse with the early endosome and put our receptor arresting complex into uh, the membrane of the early endosome here. Okay, like so. Now, if later you want to recycle uh, the receptor back to the plasma membrane, what you can do is it can leave uh, the early endosome uh, via a vesicle pinching off from one of these tentacle structures here. Okay, so little vesicles can pinch off from uh, this tentacle structure of the early endosome and they can carry the receptor back uh, to the plasma membrane and that's called recycling. Okay, so the early endosome basically is a place where we can store these receptors away from the plasma membrane for a while and then later, once the ligand has been removed from the extracellular fluid, we can return uh, the uh, G protein coupled receptor back to the cell membrane. Okay, so basically this is one of the mechanisms that underlies desensitization, the actual removal of the receptor from the plasma membrane. Alternatively, we don't even have to put the receptor back at the plasma membrane. Some of them will go on to actually be destroyed because early endosomes mature, basically. They mature into structures known as late endosomes. So if the receptor remains in the early endosome for too long, then it will stay here once the early endosome has matured into this structure called the late endosome. Now, the late endosome is a much more boring structure. It's more of a blob. It doesn't have the tentacles anymore. Okay, and that's because it isn't sending these recycling vesicles back to the plasma membrane. Okay, so this is called the late endosome. So basically, the early endosome turns into the late endosome eventually. It gets rid of these tentacles and becomes a late endosome. And then what can happen is the late endosome can fuse with structures known as lysosomes. Okay, so it can fuse with lysosomes. And lysosomes are these membrane-bound structures in the cytoplasm of cells which contain enzymes which can break down proteins, okay, so protease enzymes. So I'll cover these protease enzymes in in vivid purple here, okay. And the special protease enzymes within lysosomes are called lysozyme enzymes. Okay, so this enzyme here in vivid purple, this is representing a lysozyme. Okay, so if the receptor remains in uh, the early endosome for too long and the early endosome ends up becoming a late endosome whilst it's still there, then it will clearly get destroyed uh, by uh, the lysosomes when the lysosome fuses with the late endosome. Okay, right. Uh, so this is a way that we can then desensitize the cell even more long term, basically. Okay, because if we're actually permanently destroying our receptors, then that's going to have a longer term effect on the cell's responsiveness to the ligand for that receptor. Okay, if we're recycling them back again, then obviously it was a short term thing that we remove them temporarily and then put them back in once the ligand has gone. Okay, so that underlies the desensitization mechanisms for the GS cascade, and in fact it goes more widely than just the GS cascade, it also applies to other heterotrimeric G-protein cascades. Okay.